What's going on guys, what's cracking? Uh, no shirt on because it's hot and uh, I just can't deal with it. So you're gonna have to deal with it. So, working on the car. There's a bunch of cool stuff today. So let's just go ahead and get in that and get away from shirtless me because what? First and foremost, got an ice cold Mick Ultra today. No Keystone, changing up a little bit. Just got back from Ocean City Cruise Week, which was a great time. Actually, let me preface it with that. Preface this, preface this, preface this, preface this. White trash coming out again. So let me preface this with the fact that that was amazing. Ocean City Cruise Week this year was awesome. It was like the old years again where the cops weren't bad. Everyone was really cool. I'm really pasty white. You know, the typical. It was just awesome. We had a great time. Um, there was less people than some of the years past, but it was awesome. Like there was just no problems. The traffic wasn't as bad. It was like, it was perfect as perfect could be. The weather was great. You guys gotta go. Ocean City Cruise Week is awesome. Don't be a jack wagon if you're gonna go though. Like you can do some burnouts, do the whatever, but don't be doing donuts. I mean, you can do a burnout. You're gonna get caught, you're getting a ticket or you're getting impounded. But they impounded very few people. They, you know, they understood that, hey, they got rid of the people they wanted to get rid of, which was the H2I. And um, unfortunately, they kind of drug it out into the cruise week people for about a year or so. It sucked. They weren't as harsh on us by like not even close, but they still drug it out to us to like prove a point. Like, hey, if you're gonna do dumb stuff, we're not gonna tolerate it anymore. Now it's back to like kind of normality. Like, guys, some people do like make some pools, do a few burnouts, and they're not saying anything. Or if they do, they're like, here's your $125 fine. Don't do it again. No, no, no. Like very, very basic stuff. So, um, yeah, very simple. But I'm gonna shut up now. Let's back to the car. There's a bunch of cool stuff I want to go over with you today. All right, guys. First and foremost, let's talk about Auto Tech. Um, these guys have been awesome to me. I cannot thank them enough. Um, sorry for the noise over there too. Neighbor's life, right? So the scraping noise is there, but got a new alternator. I went ahead and installed it on the car, but there's something a little bit unique about this, and I kind of want to talk to you guys about it. The gloss black powder coat is one thing. That there's awesome. Comes with the pulley, everything. This is not underdriven also, so it's factory belt set up. Nothing special there. There's 180 amp also. Um, you can call them up. They have it readily available. I got this very fast. What makes this a little bit different, and there's a few other people running this, a few other different companies, but the fact that this right here does not use, it does not have an ignition-based exciting. So this is a self-exciting igniter. What's that mean? So when you turn the car on, it usually tells the owner, hey, we're kicking on now. You know, the battery can shut off. We're, I shouldn't say shut off because the battery's charging um, via the alternator. Uh, but this is self-exciting. So it's 180 amp self-exciting alternator. These things are awesome. I've seen a couple other companies do this and talking to the gentleman who owns this company who is, and this is the big thing with AutoTech, and I want, you, I want you guys to understand this. So I'm crouched down with the car right now, but I'm saying this, like the customer service is a big thing for me, right? It's kind of like Powerhouse Racing, how good their uh, customer service is, right? The Powerhouse Racing is known for customer service. They're just very, very good. AutoTech's the same way. Like if you call them, you can call them. It's not just email, like everyone else nowadays, you can call them, just like Powerhouse. Like very few small shops can't because I mean, it just takes a lot of your time. And I understand that. When some shop says like, hey, I can't do it, I don't have time, I get it. So I never fault them for it. But when a shop does, that is that extra mile. So AutoTech's one of the very few places that you can call them, they'll answer, they'll help you through the tech questions you have, anything you're worried about, something you might, might want to ask them. That's what makes them special, at least in my eyes. Uh, they have a very good reputation for being reliable, which is a big thing for me. And he truly tests each and every one of these. Let me show you that real quick. So if you guys ever saw my wife's video when I got my alternator for that, it comes with a little sheet. He tests each and every one of them. It will come with this. You'll see here, let's say the order number, output rating, part number, and then the amps depending on 650 RPM versus 800 or 1800 RPM, 183 amps, 129 amps. Now, the reason for that is you're seeing wires are high and low. The reason for that is depending what kind of vehicle you have, um, we'll change that, right? Uh, startup, 1800 RPM for something like a Supra, we'll see that. That'll be the max though. This is a 180 amp only, that is the max. That's the most it'll do. Um, which is more than enough for this car being a manual car. It doesn't have anything crazy. The dual fan setup is 50 amps between both fans, but they shut off over 45 miles an hour. And everything else is kind of just, it doesn't take that much draw, man. It really doesn't. It's a very basic car. Um, and I've been running this whole thing on a NA five speed alternator the whole time with 525 pumps and have had no issues, which is I think a max of 95 amps. So I'm going from 95 to 180. So it definitely shouldn't have problems now, which is pretty awesome. But again, every one of them comes with a sheet. I always keep these in the car. The other thing is too, if your battery's dead with this alternator, do not try and use it to just meaning don't try and use it to try and get it up. It'll put all the amperage you can, and it can burn up all your wiring. You don't want to do that and it can destroy the alternator. 
do not do that. The other thing is, I want to go ahead and pop this up here. Uh, the gentleman that owns the company made a nice video for me. I want you guys to watch this. I'm about to pop it up here. Give this a quick little watch. Um, hopefully it does come up. And you guys watch this and understand with self-exciting, it is a little bit different. So there's no ignition base to tell it to kick on. Once it's above 1,000 RPMs, it automatically kicks on. But you might have to give a little rev if you don't go above 1,000. All of us fuel injected guys, not a problem. I just want to try it. It's one less you know, wiring clip. One less, more, less wiring, the better for me. That's just how I look at things. This is considered a single wire setup is what they call it because you only have the power wire coming off of it for the 12 volt and that's it. But just watch this video here real quick. So that gives you guys a gist there, right? So there is a little bit of frequency, a little bit of difference, but it's so minimal. I talked to the guys at Haltech, talked to the guys uh, over at AEM. They're like, we don't ever see problems with them. You know, when he told me we we're gonna do this, he's like, you know, I'm not a fan of it because he likes perfection, right? If I say it's gonna hold 14.7 when it's idling, 14.6, whatever it needs to be voltage wise, he's like, I like that because ignition base, I can see the wiring coming out of it, I know. With this, there's a little bit of like up and down, very minimal. But he's like, I just, I prefer perfection. He said, for something so simple, but me being a hardhead, I wanted it self-exciting. My buddy Tony has it, and I really like the setup. Uh, so yeah, that's what I went with, and I'm pumped. The other thing I wanna show you guys is these Bosch knock sensors. So guys, right there's the part number. Go ahead and screenshot that. So what we're looking at is these guys are right here. These are the two-wire Bosch knock sensors, and that's a Toyota stud, which I should throw up on the screen right now. So guys, take a screenshot of that part number two. Uh, I just threw away the paperwork, so unfortunately I don't have it, but one goes there, and then one goes right there, where you can see a fuel line. If I pull this down a little bit, you can see it right there. Um, and I just put a stainless steel nut on it. So these are the two wire. I ran these on my wife. You guys saw this in a previous video. Um, they're just nice. You can actually tune them in versus the one wire, which is designed for the factory block. They don't really go outside the frequency range. So once you build the block, they're pretty much useless. So either you get these or throw away your factory ones. They pretty much are junk. Um, so yeah, I went with these just to use them. We'll see if they get utilized enough and work for me. Um, I have it on my wife's car, but her car is a stock car. This is a build engine. I really wanted them just to try it. They're cheap too, guys. Literally, I think that both the sensors are 30 bucks shipped from FCP Euro with a lifetime warranty. It's like kind of a no brainer. The studs are like 10 bucks for both. So, and then you just some random 12, uh, or sorry, M8 by one and a quarter, uh, nuts on there. So that's it. Uh, well, let's go over the other stuff I got for you today, but I just wanted to show you all that. Some other stuff was, I did get a bunch of AN fittings in. I'm um, trying to do some daisy chaining with the wastegates and some other little things. So down here, we talked about this, but this here, look at this. This is another check valve, which I did on my wife's Supra. So if you see here, this is a eighth inch MPT to a six AN fitting. Okay, so eighth inch to six AN, it's a single fitting. Then it comes to this 90 degree fitting, which is a female to female six AN fitting to a six AN check valve. So this is a check valve. I don't like the factory one, which uses a hose. This uses a 6AN. Uh, if we come over to hers, you guys take a look here. See if we can see it down there. You see the red horse one we got in there? Did that to a 90 degree 6AN fitting, come up here to 120 degree, down to there. Now, you guys already saw that. I just did this in the last video. Showed you guys what you need to do to make that part work on the brake booster. But this is just what I wanted to show you. So there's that. Here is the part number for that. This is from Racetronics. One way check valve, 6 a.m. male black. Just guys, makes it very simple. Um, look how tiny this is. Look, I mean, there's my hand. It's a little guy. This is completely unnecessary. I just like this stuff. I don't know why. I just, one less thing that doesn't have a hose, it's just like mechanical in the fact that it's like perfect fitting. It snaps on. There's no like pushing a hose on. I don't know. Uh, this really bothers me. Again, this is the only like truly hose that's going to be left on the car now. And I'm still debating whether I'm going to go to a hard line on this to make a 3 a.m. I just, for way more, as much as move, I'm just thinking I'm just gonna keep this a rubber hose. For now, we'll see. Um, time goes on, you know how that changes. I was also able to get this, let's we'll see if I can spin it. There we go. So that is a eighth inch MPT to 4 a.m. 90 degree fitting off of the intake manifold. I'm gonna put a straight fitting on this, run this up and around. Uh, that is going to be for my blow off valve for the car. Um, again, we've got a eighth inch MPT to a 90 degree female, so I can use my map sensor here, and this is my eighth inch MPT to a just slip on fitting for my uh, fuel reference. So if we come here, you can see a little bit better. See so it comes up, and bloop. Very, very simple. I, I just love A and fittings, I really do. I just, I, I know something about them just really, it makes me happy, I think they're cool. Also installed the Freed Engineering dipstick, which you guys have seen before on the wife's engine, so I got one for mine. Super simple, just plops in, goes up here, 
and had to bend the bracket a little bit to fit mine. Every application is different. Every intake manifold, these are all aftermarket, fit in there and just put that bolt in. I haven't even tightened it down yet, but it will work. I just had to bend the bracket over just slightly, but I can literally do it with my hand. So it's not a big deal. But yeah, there's so much more I got to talk about here today. But the biggest one here today, guys, again, thank you to Dress Up Bolts. Um, sent me a ton more titanium parts here. Um, we're doing a lot. So I'm trying to figure out the last nitty gritty stuff. And there's a bunch of little stuff. I'm going to give you guys lengths, sizes, whatever you need uh, to finish it up here. So the water pump here, I swapped out. So I'm only doing these three. And there's a good reason for that, guys. So some of these here are structural style bolts. So you can see here, grade nine. Um, same with this here, here, and there's one right there. Um, these ones are the only ones you really see. So once you put the plastic covers on, in my case, I'm gonna have these sweet billet covers coming here. It'll cover all this. You'll see this one, this one, this one. Technically, you can see this one here, but I mean, no, you can't. I mean, you'd have to be like, hey man, I could see your boat right there. And that's a structural bolt. I just don't feel comfortable with it. So put these in, they're titanium bolts with blue Loctite to make sure they don't work themselves out. I'm also gonna use the backing plate here. I have some short titanium bolts from Dresser Bolts too. Again, I'll get you guys a length. Just talking about it for right now. Uh, this nut here, this is what's going to hold on the powerhouse racing um, pulleys on the car. This is again, titanium nut. Um, I, so much cool stuff. I did order the wrong size, unfortunately, in this bolt. I thought that was an M8 and that was wrong. Uh, I think it's an M12. Uh, and it's a fine pitch thread. I don't know why I got it wrong, but I did because I'm an idiot. Little things, so guess it is what it is, but stuff I need to go through because you guys saw this video now. So this one's kind of out of the loop because so you guys can see I have the timing belt on now when they finish this up. Some more titanium bolts up here too. I have to use the stubbier ones. So the normal here, the normal M6 by 1.0s are much longer. I have to use these stubbies because of the specific Coil covers, they bought them out uh, because there's bolts underneath that use the same holes. So there's shared holes there, so they bought them out on each other. Um, so I got these stubby ones that worked out perfect, but I'm stoked to have a blacked out bolt instead of the shiny stainless steel look or just regular titanium. No, it's dumb, but blacked out just looks better. And again, that black won't fade. And then on the intake manifold here, we've got M8 by one and a quarter bolts holding this on. Uh, they're 25 millimeters long. Those work out perfect for the intake manifold. Using them the whole way across here, come down here underneath too and you guys can see it there m8 by one and a quarter now again some of these oem bolts are reused i cleaned them up so there's no oil grease on them anymore i always thought it weird they come with this like green stuff on it from the factory so where's some other ones this one here has it too um and when you look at the new bolts are that way too so they cleaned up really well it's amazing with oil and grease pretty much saved the ones that are really coated and you can see the ones that didn't have oil and grease because they kind of rusted cleaned up these two now this one does have a rusty head so some of these i might replace i've actually got brand new bolts over there so i might go ahead and replace those i just got to look in the box of what i've got left um but i've got some brand new bolts so i might replace these i've obviously got the brand new uh belt there uh bolt there too but again i need to order a new one for here and a couple other spots and the only reason i'm really placing this is because this is going to go to a powerhouse racing pulley setup and i want them to look perfect kind of like here so i have bolts here i'm using the nut here because obviously i can't replace this shaft and i wouldn't want to with titanium um but this here because and someone might say well Ryan, what about the tension these four here i'm not worried about there's four titanium bolts realistically that's pretty crazy to use four bolts or just studs to hold that on but when we take this off let's do this here screw this out Okay, there's no real tension on this bolt. It's just holding it in from sliding in and out. So if you take this off, all the weight is resting on that. So there's no real weight on the bolt. So if that makes anyone feel any better. So if you're worried about this being a steel bolt or anything like that, don't. It's just literally holding it from sliding out. All the weight is really being put on this contraption itself, the tensioner itself. So yeah, on that note, guys, I'm gonna bounce. Thank you guys for tuning in for another video. If you have any questions or concerns, let me know down in the comments below and peace. Oh, 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 oh,